بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه so alhamdulillah another day of me being up here and alhamdulillah another beautiful day of Ramadan so this is something you know wa in ta'uddu ni'matullahi la tahsuha yeah so if you try to count if you try to count the mercy and the blessings of Allah upon you you will never be able to count it imagine your eyes just your eyes alone imagine walking around Los Angeles with all this wild traffic you guys have around here and with all these narrow streets with no eyes how hard it would be how hard would it be this is a ni'mah a blessing in disguise we don't even think about it when we wake up when we wake up we think okay we should have our eyes we should have our hands as the prophet sallallahu he said unzuru ila man huwa asfala minkum wa la tanzuru ila man huwa fawqakum fahuwa ajdaru an la yazdaru ni'matallahi alaykum the prophet sallallahu alayhi said always look at those who are inferior to you the ones that are lower to you in everything in wealth the ones that are less fortunate they don't have food they don't have this they don't have that and he said do not look at those who are superior to you don't look at those who have are higher than you who have more money than you who have higher status than you why did why did the prophet sallallahu say this because you would forget the ni'mah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for example I always give this example. If you're driving a Honda Accord, right guys? And you look at somebody that drives a BMW. You feel a little jealous, right? He's like, man, I wish I could have that car. I wish I drove that BMW or that Mercedes or that Lexus. You forget the ni'mah. You forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gave you this Honda already. It takes you from A to B and B to C, wherever you want to go. But... If you look at those who are walking, those who are riding buses, those who are riding bicycles, wouldn't you feel thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Alhamdulillah, I don't have to wait at the bus stop. I don't have to leave the house an hour early because I have to ride my bicycle. So if we look at those who are inferior to us, lower than us, have less than us, then we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why the Prophet said, look at those who are inferior to you look at those who are lower to you so if you can't try to count the blessings of Allah that he's given to you you would not be able to count it but my main topic revi- revolves around a-, a hadith that we all go through in life it's the phase of life that we as human beings go through from young to old middle age Everyone goes through this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, اِغْتَنِمْ خَمْسًا قَبْلَ خَمْسٍ He said, take advantage of five before five other things overcome you. Boys, what did he say? Take advantage of how many? Five before five other things overcome you. And these five things are the stages of life. Whether you're any age, you go through this. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, what, number one, Shababaka qabla haramik. He said, Your youth before you become old. Imagine if you ask any of the elders here, the, you, the, you, the young ones, the high schoolers, middle schoolers, elementary, if you ask any of the elders, what's one thing you miss about being young? They would probably tell you, Oh, I miss, you know, you know walking and running and playing sports and this and that. Or I miss, you know, hanging out with my friends and, you know, being free without any responsibilities. So, when you're at an age, when you're at the youth, at a young age, we have to take advantage of our young age for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu he said in a hadith Qudsi, that there are seven people will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when there will be no shade except the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yawm la dhillu illa dhillu. 
The day that there will be no shade. You know on the Qiyamah day, the sun will be like, and as they said, a, what is this? A hand length away from your head. A mile away from your head. On that day, there will be no shade except the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the seven people, one of the seven is a youth who's always constantly at the masjid, connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, firm upon the religion. On that day, when there will be no shade, this youth, this person, will have the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day, He gives every single one of us in this room that shade. Ameen. So imagine, being young, you're full of energy, you have, you know, everything that you, you ever can want. And then when you become older and older, you don't have that opportunity anymore. Ask the elders, like I said. You know, when you're tired as a youngster, you're tired and you're praying, look at the elders in front of you. They're standing and they're probably 20, 30, 40 years older than you. So you tell yourself, like, how can I be tired and I'm only 16, 17, 15, and they're pushing 60s. And yet they're standing in the line. You know, when you're young, you have all this energy. You have all this, you know, power. So we have to take advantage of it before it is gone. The Prophet ﷺ then he said, Number two, وَصِحَّتَكَ قَبْلَ سقمك, Your health before you become sick. When you're sick, what are you able to do? What is the difference when, when, when you're sick and when you're healthy? There's a huge difference, right? When you're sick, how do you feel? Bad. Bad. Like you don't want to do anything. You need mommy and daddy to rub your back, right? Boys, like when you're, when you're sick, just for example, you're like having the cold. You're not as strong as you are when you're fully, you know, when you're fully healthy. So every single one of us will become sick. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you with sickness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you with illness. This is a way to wipe out your sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you with. Just go look in the hospitals. If you want to know how it feels, go to the hospital. Alhamdulillah, when I was, before I left to study, I used to work in the hospital. I worked as a, a pathologist assistant. So I used to work with a lot of dead bodies, a lot of, uh, um, what do you say, autopsies, a lot of, you know, in other words, a lot of surgical, you know, cancer and this and that. And subhanAllah, every time I would go and get a specimen or some, you know, a part of the body from certain rooms after surgery, I always think to myself, one day that can be me. One day I will probably be in that position. So if you, as, as Muslims, we should try to go and visit the hospitals. We should try to go, as I said last night, who was the one when the Prophet ﷺ said, Who amongst you are fasting? Who raised their hand? Abu Bakr, yes. Then the Prophet said, Who of you visited a sick? Only Abu Bakr raised his hand. Who of you vis uh, followed a funeral? Who was the one that raised his hand? Abu Bakr. Then the Prophet said, These three characteristics, these three traits in, this, in a person will guarantee him Jannah. Only Jannah is right for him. That's the only reward of this. So the Prophet ﷺ encouraged us to visit the sick. Encouraged us to help the sick. When your parents aren't feeling well, when your brothers and your sisters aren't feeling well, this is our opportunity to help them. This is part of the hadith. That we should help those who are sick. So when we're full of health, we should pray to Allah. We should do as much ibadah and worship as we can and serve our parents. Then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Number three, وَغِنَاكَ قَبْلَ فَقْرِكَ And before I get to that, before I get to that, the second one, health before becoming sick. The Prophet said there are two ni'mas. Ni'matani maghdud. There's two ni'mah that the son of Adam take for granted. And it is free time and your health. 
There's two ni'mas. These are two ni'mas that Allah gives us that we take for granted. Is your health and your free time. We think it's, we think it's, you know, it's something that we earned. But it is a ni'mah, it is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he said the third one, وَغِنَاكَ قَبْلَ فَقْرِكَ So what's the first one boys? I'm gonna ask you, what's the first one? That the Prophet said, take advantage of five before five. What's the number one? <sighs> Your youth before becoming old. Girls, what's the second one? Health before becoming sick. MashaAllah, you guys are paying attention to me. So what's number three, boys? Your, be, when you're rich, when you have wealth before becoming poor. And now in America, we're going through a, an economic crisis. Today, you can have a job and tomorrow your boss will call you, sorry, we no longer need you anymore and we have to let you go due to financial crisis. You guys probably don't think about it yet, but your parents... Like I told you in Indonesia, subhanAllah, I always use this e example. In Indonesia, when I was studying there, there was a boy. There was a boy who wanted to go on a field trip. He wanted to go on a field trip. So he said, Mommy, Daddy, he told his mom and dad a week prior. He said, Mommy and Daddy, I want to go to a field trip. Then his parents asked, how much is the cost? He said, 10,000 rupees. How much is 10,000 rupees? No, a, a, about approximately a dollar. So his parents said, okay, inshallah, by next week I will give you the money, inshallah, if we have. And hence, this family, they live, whatever the parents made yesterday, that's enough for them for tomorrow. So whatever they make today is enough for them to eat tomorrow. They're not like us, and our parents, alhamdulillah, are, are wealthy. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses and increase the wealth of our parents. Everyone say, ameen. If you don't say Ameen, then your parents will become poor, right? You don't want them that. So this kid, he told his parents, he said, Okay, Mom, Dad, I need one dollar so I can go on the field trip with my friends. And his parents said, Insha'Allah. Insha'Allah, if, if, we, if we have that luxury of having extra money, I will give it to you. So the day, the night before came. And it was time to pay to the teacher to go on the field trip. Then he came to his parents, he said, Mommy and Dad, remember that, that 10,000 rupees, that dollar that you said you were going to give me? Do you have it? Then the parents said, Unfortunately, son, we can't afford it. You said, huh? She said, huh? A dollar? This is what your people back home are going through, whether you know it or not. Whatever they make today, that's enough for them tomorrow. So whatever their parents worked today and saved, that's, how, that's what they'll be eating tomorrow. So then this kid said, okay mom, dad, it's okay. He went back to his room. As you know in Indonesia, they live in, uh, in the kampungs. You know, they don't have roofs like this. The roofs, you can see the woods and everything, right? The, 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 the wood that are on top. So then the kid, he took a rope. He tied it on top and then he tied it around his neck and he hung himself. Over what? Over one dollar. Because he wanted to go. And us, what can you buy with a dollar, boys? You can't, you can't even buy chips. Come on. You buy a chip, and there's probably like three pieces of, three pieces of chips in there. Am I right or wrong? I mean, okay, you can buy a dollar chip with, I mean, it's this, you know, you, can, you won't even get full. I mean, it'll tease your stomach. Am I right or wrong? A dollar, what can you do with a dollar? You can't even buy a drink, probably. Okay, if you go to Staters, you can buy the, you know, the... The, what do you call those? The fake type of drinks. You know, the ones that aren't, you know, the fake Cokes or something. You know? So imagine that. So when you're able to give, the Prophet said, give sadaqah even if it's with a half a date. Even if you have little. So when you're able to give and you have the money and you have the means, give. You know your friend is in need or he's during lunchtime or something and he doesn't have money and your mom made you nasi goreng or something. I think they said they're going to have baso today so I'm really happy. I, like, I can't even concentrate on my top because I'm so worried about baso being finished. No, I'm just kidding. So if you know your friend, whether they're a Muslim or not a Muslim, and you know they're in need, help them. During lunch, share your food with them. Buy something and give them half. 
This is the true friendship. This is what we Muslims have to do. This is how we actions speak louder than words. When we do something and we show something, it's more valuable and it's more known than when we talk. You can talk the talk, but if you don't walk the walk, then you're useless. But if you walk the walk and you don't even need to talk the talk, meaning if you do it with your action, it's more known than you do with your lip service. So any of us, tomorrow, you know, we can be poor. <coughs> That's why every single day, you have to make dua to Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses and increases the wealth of your parents. So that they are able to, you know, you know, buy you guys all your phones that you have and all, you know, the clothes that you wear and, you know. This is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a story of a man. Imam uh, Suhaib Web, I don't know if you guys ever heard of him. He told this story. He said, in this, in this company, they never fire anybody. They never lay anybody off. Never, ever in the, in the company's history. Maybe like 50, 60 years. They never laid off or fired anybody. And there was a group of Muslims that worked there. So every prayer, they get together and they pray Dhuhr and Asr. So one day they invited this brother. They said, brother, you know, we're going to go pray. Would you like to pray? He's like, you know what? God doesn't write my checks. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't write my check. In other words, whatever I, my hard work, this is what I gain. This is what the money that I have is from my hard work. It's not from Allah. Allah doesn't write my checks. So the brother said, okay, you know, it's between you and Allah. We're just doing our duties as Muslims to invite you to come to prayer because we're praying as a group. A week passed, two weeks passed, and then a month came. Then the company announced that they will be laying people off. They will be laying people off, meaning people will no longer have jobs. And you know what happened? He was one of the first ones to be laid off, to be let go. So then some of the brothers said to him, you know, which they shouldn't have, he said that eventually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does write your checks. So everything, the hard work that we do is not from our hard work. It's not from the money that we have, it's not from our hard work. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The money that we get from the company, is a, it's a means that we, you know, you work hard for the company, then that's how you get it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one, Ar-Razaq is the one that provides the money and the, and the, the wealth. So imagine, now you have the chance. You know, there was a, there was a fundraiser. There was a fundraiser, I believe, uh, somewhere south. I think it was Texas, if I wasn't wrong. And the speaker was like, who would like to donate? Who wants to donate this? Who wants to donate that? You know what happened? The little boy, there was a little boy. He said, I want to donate. Then the, the speaker asked him, what do you want to donate? He said, you know, at home, I have a piggy bank. He doesn't know what a piggy bank is, right? Yeah. Do they still have piggy banks now? Yeah. Okay, because my son has a piggy bank. And, <laughs> you know. So he said, Imam, I want to donate whatever is in my piggy bank. I don't know how much money is in my piggy bank, but I want to donate it for the masjid. Then they asked him, they're like, you know, what made you want to donate? What makes you want to donate your, from your piggy bank? Everything in your piggy bank. And after finding out, it was almost $100 in his piggy bank. What? She's like, what? <laughs> yes, almost $100. Then they asked him, like, what made you want to donate? Why? Like, you just all of a sudden wanted to be nice or something? He's like, you know what? Because every time I see my dad donating, every time I come to the masjid, my dad would give me a dollar to put in the, in the box. Every time I come to the masjid, whatever money I find in the car coins, I take it and I put it in the masjid box, the, the donation. This is what made me want to donate. So as his parents were the ones that instilled this type of characteristic in him. So when you come to the masjid here, you have a quarter in your pocket, whatever. Take it and put it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And believe me, believe me, on the day of judgment, 
when you don't even know, when you think something, a quarter is insignificant. It's something small, right? A quarter. What can you do with a quarter now? You can't even put it in those machines and get those gums anymore, right? Some of them take like 50 cents now. Right? Usually, you know, you put a quarter in there and you get like a ball, a bouncing ball. You can't even get it with a quarter anymore. Am I right? You go to the grocery stores and you... It, it, so imagine just this quarter that you bring and you put in the box is better than anything in this world. Then you will find it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, this is the quarter that you gave. Because of this quarter, they help pay the masjid bill. They help the masjid water, the garbage can, this and that. So don't think something you have a 10 cents, a penny, even a penny. Don't underestimate it. Because in your eyes, it might be something small, but in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's something big and something expensive. So your richness before you become poor. None of us can say tomorrow we will have a job. Not even your parents. So that's why it's important when you have, give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know there was one Sahabi. During this time in Medina, he, his wife was pregnant. And his wife during that time, she was hungry for apples. And, there, and that season, it was not apple season. So if it's not apple season, do you think they'll, they'll be able to find apples? They wouldn't be able to find apples, right? It will be almost impossible. So this Sahabi said, you know, he could have easily said to his wife, uh, Honey, you know, there's no apples. What are you talking about? It's not the time of the year. But no, he went out. So as he was going out, he went everywhere and searched, and searched for apples. Then he finally came to an area and he found one apple. And he's like, yes, my wife is going to be so happy with me. He took this apple and he was walking home with it. Then he ran into a Sahabi, another companion of the Prophet ﷺ. And this companion said, oh my goodness, where did you find that apple? My wife is pregnant and she's craving. If you had a wife, k k boys, if you had a wife, for example, if you had a wife, and someone said, oh, oh for example, your mom, you found something for your mom. And your friend came to you and said, Oh, you know what? My mom, oh, my mom is in need of that. Can I have it? What would you say? What you smoking? Right? <laughs> You're like, what you smoking? You know, like, what, like, like, are you crazy? Are you, are you serious right now? That's what we would say, right, girl? If you had something special, you bought something for your mom. For example, iPhone X, right? Oh, your parents are like, yeah, my, inshallah, one day my kids will buy it for me. Right? So for example, iPhone X, you know how hard it is to get, right? Or before how hard it was to get. And you bought it. You're like, yes, I got it in my cart. Then your friend came and said, oh, you know what? I always wanted to get my parents an iPhone X. Can I, can I get yours? You'd be like, <laughs> you crazy. You are crazy. So anyways, this Sahabi, he said, oh my goodness, my wife was looking for apples. And you know what this Sahabi said? He could have easily like, dude, you can go find your own apple. This is for my wife. If my wife knows I'm going to give it to you, she's going to kill me, right? That's what, that's what the Sahabi... But you know what this Sahabi did? He had faith. He had Iman. He had Yaqeen. That if he gives... <laughs> and he said, Yaqeen. He has Yaqeen that if you give, Allah will give you more. If you give, Allah will give you more. So you know what he did? He's like, you know what? Take it. I know your wife needs it more than my wife. So he came home. He's like, you know, honey, I found an apple, but I knew this Sahabi, his wife needed it more than you. So I gave it to him. Imagine what your wife would say if you did that. Brothers, uncles back there. Your wife is like, what? Get out of the house. No, go and find it, right? This is what our wife would say, right? Not the wives here. Inshallah, the wives here, mashallah, luar biasa. Nah, the wives in another, in another city, inshallah. But imagine that. So the wife said, okay, alhamdulillah. It is meant for that sister. It is meant for that. So after they were talking, they heard a knock on the door. They heard a knock on the door. So they opened the door. The man opened the door. And there was a kid with a basket of apples. Because he knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you give one, Allah will give you how many? More, Allah will give you seven. Allah will give you 
Seven. You give one, Allah will give you seven. So he took the basket. He's like, okay, I want to see, you know, we'll, we'll see. So he counted the apples. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he told the boy, give me the seven. Give it to me. The boy's like, okay, I'm sorry. I, want, I wanted to eat it, you know. So the boy took the seventh one and gave it to him. So he knew that Allah's promise was real. Allah will not لا يخ, لا يخلف الله وعده. Allah does not you know Allah does not go against his promise. Allah does not break his promise. So then imagine this. You give for the sake of Allah, Allah will give you. You give one, Allah will give you seven and he will multiply it and multiply it. So when you have when you have the ability to give Give before you're not able to give anymore. Give before you don't have. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. See, I'm, we we should be. I only have one more minute left. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, the next one, number four. He said, take advantage of your free time before you are occupied. qabla shughrik. And the Prophet said, there are two things that the son of Adam take does not take advantage of, or he takes. For granted is your free time and your your health exactly. So when you have free time, spend it for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You have free time. You don't have any. You're done with your homework. Go help your mom and your dad. When you don't have, when you're, when you have your free time, sit down and read a book. Make dhikr. Do something beneficial for your life. When you have free time, don't just oh I'm gonna go. You know how we say nowadays? Hey, I need. I want to kill time, right? That's what we say nowadays. Oh, I'm going to kill time. I'm going over there because I want to kill time. And Allah subhanahu you know how important time is? Allah swears by time. Wal asr. And by time. That's how important time is. Al waktu ka saif illam taqtahu qata'ak. Time is like a sword. If you do not manage it correctly, it will cut you up. Sometimes we sit and we're like, oh my goodness. We, you know, we're, we're doing something and it's like, what? It's 10 o'clock already? It's lunch time already? Time passes. And you know one of the signs of the Day of Judgment is what? When time passes by so quick, so fast. Girls, when the sign, one of the signs of the Day of Judgment is when, when time passes by so quick and so fast. We don't even realize it. Sometimes we're doing something like, oh my God, it's time already? Really? It's time to break fast already? Time just flashes right before our eyes. Then the Prophet ﷺ, he said the last one, وَحَيَاتَكَ قَبْلَ مَوْتِكَ I'm going to wrap up. Your life before your death. Because every single one of us is going to go. Every single one, we're gonna, time is up. Our time is going to be up soon. Whether, we, whether we're 18, whether we're 14, whether we're 13, whether we're 12, 11. If it's time, it's time for us to go. And once we're gone, there's no turning back. Whatever we have done, this will be on our account. We will find it. We will find it in our emails during the Day of Judgment. If we get our, if we get our books on our right hand, we are amongst the what? The winners. But if we get our books on our left hand, we are amongst the? The losers. The ones that will be in Jahannam forever. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, we'll make a quick dua and then we'll get ready for uh, iftar inshallah. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a long and healthy and a life full of iman and Islam and ihsan. Ameen. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us and forgive our parents and forgive every and all the Muslims all around the world. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He accepts our prayer, our fasting, our standing in prayer, our ruku, our sujood, and everything that we do only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, no answers then. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're laughing. I'm not that funny, am I? Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for starting and sharing with us. Inshallah, may Allah bless you all.
I mean, 